Aquatic ecosystems play many key roles in the landscape, and Quebec has an extraordinary abundance of fresh waters, including many hydroelectric reservoirs. We now know that among many important processes, these freshwater systems produce significant amounts of carbon dioxide and methane. It is important to understand these greenhouse gas emissions, particularly those from hydroelectric reservoirs, because these contribute to climate warming. Here we will show you the research that the Yukam Carvest team has been carrying out in the Romaine hydroelectric complex, which is composed of four reservoirs built along the Romaine River in northern Quebec. The first reservoir was commissioned in 2014 and the last one in 2021. The objective is to determine the greenhouse gas emissions of this very large hydroelectric complex and to assess how these emissions have changed since 2015, after the first reservoir was built. In this collective effort, a team of 8 to 10 people travel more than a thousand kilometers from Montreal to Ac saint pierre each campaign, spending between two to three weeks working. We bring with us all the materials to build the lab space in the community hall in the Chevalier de Colomb of Arc saint pierre which becomes our home base for the whole campaign. In this lab space, we store all of our equipment, analyze all the samples we collect, and it also serves as a communication center for teams that go out to the field. On a typical day, we have up to four teams of two to three people working in the field and one team staying in the lab for safety and analyzing samples. These teams are the hydroplane and boat teams, as well as the teams of Mariana and Gabriel, graduate students in the Carvest group. The hydroplane and boat teams follow the same sampling scheme, but the hydroplane team is going to the farthest locations in La Romaine 3 and 4, which are not reachable by boat or car. The sampling starts with us collecting water to take back to the laboratory for multiple analyses. We collect samples to determine the concentrations of carbon dioxide and methane in the water. We fill a bottle with water from the reservoir, replace half of its volume with air and shake the bottle for two minutes. The shaking forces the gases out of the water into the air in the bottle. Then the gas sample is taken back to the lab to be analyzed for concentrations of these gases. We also measure the exchange of gases between the water and the atmosphere to better understand what is emitted from the reservoirs. For this, we use a floating chamber, which is a type of modified inverted bucket attached to a portable greenhouse gas analyzer. Inside this chamber, a specific area of the water surface is closed from the atmosphere and the gases that get out of the water under the chamber are measured every second by the gas analyzer. By the end of 5 minutes, we can see the increase of carbon dioxide and methane concentrations within the chamber over time. While the hydroplane and boat teams focus on the general monitoring of nutrients, carbon and gases in the reservoirs, Mariana's team, yes, this is me, we focus on methane bubbles, also called ebullition. Methane bubbles are emitted directly from the bottom of aquatic environments, in variable moments and places controlled by many environmental factors, such as atmospheric pressure, water level fluctuations, or even temperature changes. The thing is that we still don't understand completely how that happens. For instance, how all these factors work together to produce the patterns of ebullition that we see in these environments. So, in order to understand the methane bubble emissions better, we develop a new prototype of autonomous bubble trap system, which is basically an inverted funnel that collects and measures methane bubbles continuously. And during the La Home campaign, many of these traps are deployed in various sites in two of the reservoirs. This is actually a difficult operation because we deploy approximately 50 automatic bubble traps during the first campaign. The logistics of deployment is complex. Then the traps need to be visited, serviced, and sometimes repaired in the second campaign and removed in the last one. This demands a huge collective effort from the team, but it is the price for obtaining ebullition data in a magnitude that probably was never collected before. Now we are in the stream network of Lac Bernard. Contrary to everyone else here, I am working specifically in streams. The stream network is important because it has a close interaction with the surrounding land and moves large amounts of carbon and other materials that originate from soils. I am studying the carbon dynamics in the river network of the Lac Bernard watershed. 
The reason why we are working here is that we are part of a multidisciplinary study aiming at reconstructing the watershed carbon footprint. We focused on seven streams where we deployed instruments that continuously measured the temperature of the water and the concentrations of CO2 and oxygen. This will allow us to determine the processing of carbon in the water and the emissions of CO2 to the atmosphere. We also deployed pressure sensors that allow us to monitor changes of the movement of the water in these streams and with all of this together, we can estimate the quantity of materials being transported by these streams. Ultimately, we want to bring together our information with that of terrestrial and wetland groups so we can develop a whole watershed carbon balance and to improve our understanding of how carbon moves across the landscape. It is also a way to build bridges between research communities that traditionally have not interacted much. After a long day in the field, we still have a lot of work to do. Now, we process and analyze all the gas and water samples brought back by the hydroplane and boat teams. We have several stations in the lab, but for now, we'll only focus on a few. Water is filtered for nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and carbon. We also filter water to collect chlorophyll, a pigment we can measure to determine algae concentrations in the water, as well as particular organic matter, which are things like leaf fragments, branches, and other small materials floating in the water. Microbes, like bacteria and tiny algae, are also considered to understand who lives in the water and their role in the biological processes occurring in the reservoirs. The gas samples from the bottles we were shaking in the field are also analyzed to determine the greenhouse gas concentrations in the water. Collectively, these analyses help us understand how the chemistry and biology of the reservoirs are changing over time. After all that, tomorrow is a new day and we do it all over again. In La Romaine campaign, we do a lot of work as you can see, but we also have some fun together. And finally, after two to three weeks, we get back to Yukon where our work continues. Back in Montreal, there's still a lot of work to be done. Hundreds of samples need to be processed in the lab. Equipment needs to be repaired and put away. Data needs to be analyzed and stored. Each campaign strengthens our understanding of how these young boreal reservoirs function, how they evolve in time, and what their environmental impact is. As we proceed, we share our findings with the community through papers that we write, presentations and meetings and reports, in the hope that these findings will be useful for society as a whole. Mm -hmm.